guys and welcome back to another satisfactory, super efficient build layout and today we're taking a total of 150 iron ore, 70 copper and 150 raw quartz and turning it into 5 vanilla crystal oscillators per minute. This is in itself a standalone layout guide, but we have many more that you can find in our playlist or over on our website, satisfactorytips.com. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Now for this build, we will need, along with the 150 iron ore, 70 copper ore and 150 raw quartz, eight smelters, 23 constructors, three assemblers and five manufacturers, as well as up to 444 megawatts. And we should also note that this will be on a 12 wide by 13 deep grid. In this build, we have colored some of the foundations to resemble item inputs. The fourth column is pink for raw quartz, the fifth column deep orange for iron ore, and the 11th column pale green for copper. And we will also be using the manifold technique for this build, which will mean that this needs to be fully saturated to run at 100% efficiency. First, we need to turn our raw quartz into quartz crystal using constructors. In order to get the placement, we shall place four constructors flowing to the left of the grid from the first row of the third column up to the fourth row. These will all be set to quartz crystal and on the input side of these constructors place down splitters and on the opposite side place mergers. Then connect these up with conveyors. Note that the mergers are placed against the far end of the second column. That's the side against the left of the grid. And the input belts for this will need to be Mark 3 or greater and the output belts a Mark 2 belt or greater. Finally, the merging line should be facing the top of the grid. However, we'll place the line later on. Now, with the quartz out of the way, we shall now place our smelter line. Place a smelter in the center of each foundation from the fifth column through to the twelfth column. These should be spanning the first and second row. The first five will be set to iron ingots and the last three will be set to copper. Note that the copper smelters should all be set to 78% clock speed. We will now place a manifold line coming in from the fifth column, feeding iron ore to the five smelters. Note you will need a Mark III conveyor to carry the 150 iron ore. In the 11th column, we shall also bring up the copper ore, splitting the 70 copper on a Mark II conveyor equally between the three smelters. On the opposite side of the copper smelter run, a merging belt to the right of the grid flowing forwards and in front of the third smelter. Then, in front of the iron smelters, we will mirror this, flowing a merging line to the left of the grid, with the last merger in front of the first iron smelter flowing to the top of the grid. At this point, we will place the constructors, which work with the iron ingots and copper ingots. First place another four constructors in the same line as the quartz crystal constructor line. These will be set to iron plates and each constructor will be set to 94% clock speed. We will also place a manifold of splitters in front of the constructors. I've placed these splitters so that they're against the right hand side of the fourth column and on the opposite side place a merging line flowing to the top of the grid with the merger's inputs against the constructor's outputs. This will give us enough room to run the quartz crystal line against the far side of the mergers. Next, we shall place a single splitter flowing forwards directly adjacent to the merger flowing forwards in the fifth column. This will be used to give us the correct positioning to now place our next eight constructors, all of which should flow forwards to the top of the grid. Place these from the fifth column all the way to the twelfth column. The first three should be set to iron rods and set to 84% clock speed. The other five will be set to 
wire with each constructor running at 94% clock speed. Next, we need to place the manifold splitting lines. First, place a splitter to the right of our previous splitter in column 5. This should feed the iron into the two other constructors. If you struggle getting a conveyor to the third constructor, you can use an additional splitter in front of the constructor to create a direct direction change. On the opposite side of these constructors, we shall run a merging line to the front of the constructor in the fifth column flowing forwards. Returning to the splitter in the fifth column, we shall now run a Mark II belt from the left output all the way up to the manifold line that you placed for the iron plates above the raw quartz. Next, mirroring the input manifold for the iron rods, we shall do the same for the copper wire constructors, placing a manifold flowing towards the centre of the grid. Again, on the opposite side, we shall mirror the merging line so that we end up with a merging line flowing forwards in front of the constructor in the 12th column. Note that this merging line should be a Mark III line of conveyors. We shall now place the constructors for the cable and the screws. For this, we shall repeat the same manifold system for part one with a splitter flowing forwards placed in front of the iron rod and copper wire mergers in the fifth and twelfth column. We will also place directly in front of these another constructor line. Here, place seven constructors with a space between the fourth and fifth constructor in the ninth column. You will then run these splitting manifolds into these constructors. The first four will be set to screws and will require a Mark III merging line. Note that these screws should all be merged into a merger flowing forwards in front of the third constructor rather than on the ends. These screw constructors should each be set to 94% clock speed. Then over on the copper side, we will set the three constructors to cable and set them at 78% clock speed and then merge in front of the middle constructor. Once done, your build should look a bit like this. Now at this point we shall place three assemblers spanning the 8th and 9th row. Start by placing the middle assembler so that the right side input is in front of the iron screw merger we just placed in the 7th column. Now place the two other assemblers directly adjacent to this one. Next, place a splitter in front of the merger and split the screws between the three assemblers. At the same time, we will want to run another splitting manifold above this line. This manifold line should be stacked three splitters high so that we can connect a conveyor elevator directly between the assembler inputs and the manifold line. Now this line will run the iron plates from the neighbouring iron plate line. And note how I've wrapped the Mark II conveyor line all the way around the top of the constructor line to the manifold and then lifted it using a conveyor elevator. On the opposite side of the assemblers, run a merging line in front of the third assembler flowing forwards. These three assemblers should be set to reinforce the iron plates and set at 84% clock speed. We are now ready to place the manufacturers. Now this is going to be a tight squeeze, so first place the fourth manufacturer so that its furthest left input is located parallel to the assembler's merger. The top side of the manufacturer should have just enough room to place a merger. The merger unfortunately will need to clip slightly to fit in the grid, so if you do worry about space or clipping, then just add an extra foundation along the top row and have a little more space between the mergers. Once placed, place three more manufacturers to the left, directly adjacent to one another, and one manufacturer to its right. 
we now need to run three manifold lines into the inputs. First place a splitter in front of the assembler's merger and run a manifold with the reinforced iron plates along the bottom line. Use whichever inputs you prefer. Once done, we shall run a second manifold line stacked twice high above the first manifold using conveyor elevators like we did before in the assembler section to feed the manufacturers. This line should be input by the cable we've merged in the 11th column. Next, we're going to bring out the quartz crystal up from the second column to another manifold line located one stack above the cable manifold line. Again, we will be using splitters to split items off along this manifold line with conveyor elevators so that they directly feed into the manufacturer inputs. At this point, each manufacturer should have three input lines and each be set to crystal oscillators, producing a total of five crystal oscillators per minute. Finally, merge these manufacturers together and send them off to the next stop along the factory, whether that's for a production or to storage. So there you are guys, our super efficient build guide for crystal oscillators. Now if you did find this guide helpful, then please do drop a thumbs up. And if you do want to see more, then why not join us over on Twitch or subscribe on here for more. Anyway guys, we are going to leave it there. As always, thank you so much for watching and until next time, you know it. Ciao for now.